see how this would help us on this because we don't have that much invested. Mm -hmm. But the question I have is the amount that you're saying that we divide that you have left over at the mm -hmm. end of the year. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That this doesn't seem like good business to me you're, you're doing with this. You see what I'm saying? As far as taking a value that's actually nowhere near that and say it's worth that. Well, understand that. Then have to pay that. Well, you're you're talking again. We're talking about street value to sell that actual building that you have there, versus if you lose it completely in a fire. I can't go out and I can't go buy those used materials. I can't go buy those those used shingles and the and, and some demolished brick somewhere and, and cobble you together a building. I'm going to have to go buy new shingles. I'm going to have to go buy a new brick, um, uh, new studs, new new whatever. And that's what it would cost to put that particular building. And, and that's just the way it is. It has to do that. Uh, from a replacement cost perspective, we we can't we can't say well you only paid seventy grand for it so we're only going to give you seventy grand because you can't put that building back for seventy grand. It's going to cost you, according to the valuations, it's going to cost us you know roughly two hundred fifty grand to put that building back as it is, um, same materials and so mm -hmm. on moving forward. Well, just like you know, your personal experience, if you build a house for a hundred thousand dollars twenty five years ago, and if it destroys completely. And you go out here tomorrow and have to replace it. You're probably talking about two hundred fifty thousand. That's correct. Yes, sir. That's correct. The same thing. And the same thing with you know whether it's a twenty-five year old building or the same thing. We've got uh, we've got buildings that uh, that you know were built in nineteen twenty-five. Uh, whether it's a courthouse or whether it's a, a nine one one center that they've converted over. And when they built that when they built that structure, um, you're talking they put you know twelve thousand dollars to build that structure. Well, today to build that structure is going to cost a hundred grand. I can't keep twelve thousand dollars on that building, even though maybe to sell it you might only get fifty grand out of it. But if I have to put it back with those same materials, it's going to cost me a hundred grand. So I have to have it listed for that, which ultimately is, is where the which is where the cost for for covering those buildings come into play. Um, after after talking to the people in Ritchie County, mm -hmm. and hearing the horrifying story of the fire. Mm -hmm. And then listening to the aftermath of the forty thousand dollar value based on what they're going to get for one fifty, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it makes me comfortable knowing we're in the pool because it protects us from such a loss. You cannot be underinsured as far as the building is, is concerned. You cannot be underinsured with the risk pool. It's not. It's not possible. It's not possibly underinsured because you have replacement cost on that. Uh, you will get in the contract like kind and quality for the materials for the structures you have, which is why we do this to make sure that we're charging you the right amount. Because if we were to go in and we were to assume that okay, you told us that building is worth two hundred twenty-nine thousand um, dollars. I've seen buildings that I've been told are worth two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars that they're actually worth a million or more. And so then what we do is we go back and we end up charging them the next year for that million dollar value. We have to go back in and do that. And that's the only appropriate way for us to be able to collect what we well, need. Well, I guess to that's the point I'm getting to is that's what bothers me about saying that's worth that much. Mm -hmm. And then next year, if it's still there, then that's what the value is you charge. That's correct. That, okay. is, that is correct. Absolutely. Yeah, that and, and the next year, are you comfortable with that or uncomfortable with that as far right. as? Right. That's just, you know, I, I just think that, I just want to get to that point is that, yeah, we charge you that next year for what that for what, what that building value. for what we value it as because if you lose it, we have to put it back at that cost. That, that's the rub, I guess. I guess uh, you know I disagree with the numbers. I mean, you know, okay. so I, can, I mean, knowing property somewhat around here, you know, mm -hmm. you know, knowing the situation that building's in, if it sets over there, then it's going to cost us more next year. Well, it is going to cost you more because if you lose it. I'm not going to have, I can't have an engineer go in after you lose the building and go, well, um, the third floor was ready to collapse and the second floor had a lot of leaks in there. Right, no, I understand, I understand, but, but I can't go in and go, so we're going to build you a building that's going to have the third floor ready to collapse. We're going to give you a, a building that has a second floor that has all leaky pipes. We're going to put that building back that's got brand new everything. So it's going to cost us that. Now to sell that building, you might not be able to sell it for 30 grand. But that doesn't mean that that's not what's worth for us as far as the program and you as the, as the program owners to be able to pay to put it back. You have to have that amount to put it back. It's, it's, um, they're two different numbers. They're, they're really two different numbers. Um, same thing if you go out and you buy, you buy a home for, you know, for 40 grand uh, and you take it to your homeowner's po uh, uh, policy and you wish to add that. Uh, just because you bought it for 40 grand if you list it for 40 grand, that's all you're going to get. But if you lose it and it costs you 100 grand to put it back, you still only get the 40 grand, you're out the 60. 
Okay, we're, we don't, we, the pool's not designed to put you in that position. We're, to, we're designed to make you whole again, and put you back where you were. In that case, put you back in that building. And do you have, is it, the way the pool works, I mean, you've got, a, you've got Virginia also, you've got a huge operation, not just question, but do you not uh, take these certain investments and, and actually, through other insurance agencies, uh, actually do the coverage you guys don't really self-insure, but you really we, we do. But you have other people. You buy insurance. Really. Yes, yes, sir. That's correct. And, and two points on that. You're, you're exactly right. We actually work with the Virginia pool as well as the West Virginia pool. They're two completely separate pools. Um, we administer both. The, the, the firm for which I work, we actually administer both. They are two completely separate pools. They have to be. They're required to be by by, by code and by law. But we do operate. But what we do is we purchase for the West Virginia County Risk Pool. We purchase what's called reinsurance. What we do as far as from a reinsurance perspective, we purchase a property reinsurance uh, policy and what's called a, uh, a liability or a casualty reinsurance policy. So what we do is the pool, just like you take a $1,000 deductible on your buildings, the pool takes a $250,000 deductible, if you will, on any one loss. So for example, if, we were to, if you were to lose this courthouse and it costs us $9 million to put it back, just using those numbers, the pool would pay you the $9 million. Okay, you would get a check from the pool for $9 million. What you wouldn't see on the back end is that you would actually have the, a check before that happened. You would actually see it, there would actually be a check on the back end coming from the reinsurance provider to the risk pool for that $9 million less the two fifty. dollars So what would happen is the pool is only out $250,000 and the reinsurance, and it's the same thing. So when you, when you hear about the, those major losses uh, during, uh, during Katrina, um, and, they, and they talk about how many billions of dollars were lost by State Farm and by Nationwide. Well, understand that Nationwide, the front office, didn't, didn't incur all those 1.5 or 2.5 or 4.5 billion dollars. They incurred a certain amount and then laid that off to their reinsurance. And they actually have different layers of that. So they, they, they endured, let's say, the first 500 million. And then the next 500 million, the next, next billion, was laid off on their reinsurance provider. This program works the same way that, that uh, uh, that insurance providers work that we in purchase the reinsurance the though if there's a, if they experience more loss they increase your right um, <clears throat> we actually work very closely with our reinsurance providers um, ultimately um, that is a commercial that is a commercially provided uh, service that, that we purchase they have the opportunity to do that uh, we as far as the firm working with the uh, working with the Virginia pools working closely we haven't seen a property reinsurance uh, increase in well over 10 years uh, we're in good shape. Uh, we're, we're in the position now where we think we can provide what we've said we'll provide, which is a stable cost, uh, a, a good quality service, uh, and, 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 good, and good coverage, uh, which, is, which is kind of where we sit at this point. And I'd be happy to answer any questions, any other questions from the board or anybody else who's in attendance today, but uh, that's kind of where we are. The pool, again, is in real good shape. Uh, we feel as if uh, we see some growth going forward. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, whether it's now or in the future, that, uh, that Lincoln County will have. You will have a quarterly report uh, coming out to you in about two and a half weeks or so for your losses. And I apologize I didn't bring a copy of that, but you'll have a quarterly report coming out. And it'll show you just all your losses from uh, as of April 1 all the way back to the beginning of the program. So, so since 207 with the inception of the program across the state, have you had any county to withdraw? No, sir, we have not. We have not had any county. In fact, we haven't had any member, whether it's a county commission member or a county-related authority, we have had no one withdraw from the, from the program um, since, since the inception. We actually had one member, we actually had one program or one county commission that said they were going, that they were going to join the pool, and then they withdrew after about two weeks. If you want to argue